It's been a while since I've done a good old fashioned anti haul where I just talk about things that I think are ridiculously wasteful and that we shouldn't be buying. And if you didn't already know, my whole kind of philosophy and purpose when it comes to this channel, my lifestyle, and like overall environmentalism is that we should be buying as few things as possible to have the smallest environmental impact as possible because the majority of the environmental impact of anything that we buy happens before we ever buy it, meaning when we buy things, we are creating a demand for more of those things to happen. And I could go on for days, I could go on for years, as I have on this channel, about all the ways that consumerism impacts the environment. And when you trade your money for those goods, you're saying, you know, I think that's all right. I think that destroying habitats and rainforest and contributing to all this pollution and destruction of people's economies, exploiting people for their labor, for their land. Here's my money. I think what you're doing is just fine. Can't live without my KKW contour. Yes, my goal is for the people who watch these videos to buy less stuff. I want us all to buy less stuff. But my aim these days is to denormalize this behavior because over on other apps, also on this, this platform, YouTube, it is very normal to sit down and talk about all the things that you bought that really you didn't need and you didn't even consider wanting before you saw them while you were scrolling. So this series exists and always has to tell you that you don't need all this crap. And these are just some of the things that I've seen recently that I decided I don't need. And because I haven't uploaded an anti-haul in like a really long time, I've taken a little bit of a break because I've been focusing on some other areas, okay? One of the things I'm incredibly passionate about right now is grass lawns. I uploaded a video recently about why they suck. Go check that out. Disrupting carbon sequestration and disrupting the amount of water that is able to be reabsorbed into our soils and also just being really boring to look at. Yeah, you guessed it, it's grass. All of those things I just described are grass lawns. But I always gotta bring it back to my roots. So let's talk about some wasteful things I've seen online lately that I would like to change your mind on and uh, denormalize this sort of consumerism behavior. Oh, let me also say before I get into the things that I think are wasteful and we don't need to be buying, that this video doesn't have a sponsor, so I'm sponsoring myself with my own brand, which is a brand that seeks to reduce consumerism, reduce plastic waste, reduce single-use items in the environment in general, and that is a reusable period underwear brand. I have been using reusable period underwear for years. I recently did a little update, a little refresh about my routine, which I'll also link up here in this corner if you can go watch that after this. I'm not gonna go on and on about it. If you're interested in reducing the single-use products in your life, check us out. I'll link it at the top of the description. Now, the first thing that I feel like has become so normalized and like I've seen it happen with people in my life, which is why I feel like it's very in my face and it's a little bit weird to me, is um, the obsession with getting people's nails done but like you're doing it yourself at your home. And what I am seeing again with people like in my life and things that I've seen on the internet is that people are essentially buying whole nail salons for their home. I'm nodding like I understand, but I'm not so sure I do. And the people that I know that have been doing this who literally have like nail salons in their home and then joke about it on their Instagram story that like they're at their nail salon when they're doing their nails and they pull out these giant like tubs of nail stuff. The people I know doing it are doing it to save money, which I've talked about on this channel for so many years that I don't think to care about the environment or to do better, you have to give up everything that you love. If you decide that doing your nails is something that you're like really in love and passionate about, I say you do it and you do better in other places when it comes to being sustainable, okay? But it's one thing to go to a nail salon and uh, like use up the things that are there. It's another to go buy supplies that are meant for a nail salon and use them as one person because I don't think you're literally ever gonna go through all of those materials. And I know that because you have a whole stack of them and you buy new colors every month. And it's just like this normalization of basically having a nail salon in your home um, because in some ways it's a f more affordable, although I can't imagine that owning all of those things yourself at the end of the day is more affordable. If we're going to see people doing their nails more at home to save money as we further and further progress into 
the awful economic situation that we've been in for the last couple of years, can we at least incentivize people to share with their friends so that not everybody on your block has their own nail salon in their home? That's all I'm here to say. I don't like the normalization and the little jokes, but they're not really jokes because you literally have as much in your possession to make the gel nails, the powders, the polishes, the like the little things that dry your nails. And everybody who is doing their nails now owns one. It's just too much. I find it very unnecessary and kind of the epitome of hyper-consumerism. I do not know why TikTok thought that I would want to see this content. It's called a cracking latte, and essentially what these people are doing is A, using a disposable plastic cup to make their latte in their own home. Do I have to say how ridiculous I feel that is, that you could just take a cup that you already have at your house and make your coffee in it? I know you didn't need to go buy single-use plastic cups to do that, but it's a whole trend on TikTok of people literally doing that, buying single-use plastic cups so that then they can line those cups with hard chocolate. Like when you spread it, it's a spreadable chocolate and then it hardens. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when there's hard chocolate in your latte, it's not flavoring your latte because it's hard. Unless you're maybe pouring hot coffee and then maybe it melts some of that chocolate, but none of the things that I saw about this cracking latte were of hot coffee because like, Millennials and Gen Z prefer cold coffee. I'm one of them, I'm guilty. But that, that really just like defeats the purpose. So at the end of the day, what, what I'm witnessing is people buying single-use plastic cups, lining them with chocolate, and then putting their latte in it, and then squeezing it to crack it, all just to, literally to make a TikTok. I'm pretty sure this is just to make a TikTok. Like one person does it to make the TikTok because it's cute, hee hee, whatever. And then more people feel the need to do that to also make the TikTok because it's cute, hee hee, whatever. And now we're creating waste for literally no reason. It's just so weird to me that that's like normal. I don't think it should be normal. And at this point in my life, this stage in my life as an environmentalist, single-use plastic is not my main priority. I have a video where I plan on talking about things I no longer do that are sustainable that I just stopped doing as an imperfect environmentalist, okay? I, I'm not saying that I have never drank out of a plastic cup, but I can tell you I've never made coffee in my own house and put it in a plastic cup just to do some silly little trend with it. And I don't think that should be normal. The fact that we are not even in July and I am seeing stuff online talking about Halloween decorations makes me way more angry than I think it should. And for me personally, as someone who lives in, in Texas, it's not going to be fall weather or fall vibes at all until at least December. So even by the time October rolls around, it's not, I'm not feeling the vibes, okay? It's still 100 degrees. But I made a whole video about this last uh, fall season. If you wanna go watch it, check it out. But like seeing it come across the internet, and I've seen some of it in stores too already, where people, excuse me, excuse me. Anyway, I know part of my frustration with the way that people are already talking about going and buying new things for fall and Halloween, because it can't just be, we're excited for it coming. No, it's the whole, here's the haul of all the new things I bought this year. And like the normalization of seeing that online. So people think that it is normal and okay. And there's nothing wrong with replacing your fall decor every year. That is what irks me about it. It's the consumerism of it all. Like we've conflated seasons with the things that we're buying instead of the the actual changing of the weather or the time of the year. And it really freaking irks me. So what I'm anti-hauling here, let's do two things. Buy new Halloween and or fall decor every year. We anti-haul this behavior. And number two, fall before, let's say September. I'll give you September. But if you start talking about Halloween in July or August, I don't like you. Please, I'd rather, I'd rather sit in my bed like just staring at a wall. That's a thousand times more entertaining than being around those people. I don't know who decides what is trendy, but it's not, it's clearly not me. And whoever it is, I would like to speak to you because the fact that you think bringing back ballet flats in the year of Jesus Christ, year 2024, is an absolute no for me. And what I remember of ballet flats being the thing to wear to like, my meetings and when I was walking around campus is that my feet felt like they were on fire 24 seven because they're very, very thin shoes. They have no structure to them and they're barely covering your foot. And I just remember being so uncomfortable all the time because my feet were on fire and I have no interest in wearing them again. I have no interest in bringing them back. I don't know why anyone would. And I like to talk about this from my perspective because the reason that I'm not buying things could definitely be different from yours. But the takeaway that I want you to 
to take away is that we don't need to buy things just because they're cool and or trendy or we saw them. The, the reason that you might go through in your mind of why you don't want to buy something or why you don't want to participate in a trend could be different. But at the end of the day, I want the way that we're going about consumerism to be conscious. That's where the word conscious consumerism comes from because we don't want people just buying things because they're trendy because in a couple months they won't be anymore. And that's incredibly wasteful and bad for our planet. With conscious consumerism, consumerism, you don't just buy what's trendy because you see it and because it's cool and because you want to fit in and then it ends up getting wasted. Consciously, you think ballet flats are fucking awful. I've experienced them in my life, so I don't want to participate in this trend. But I find what happens over time is we're exposed to it so much, we start seeing it so much everywhere that we become desensitized to it to the point where the thing that we thought was ugly and we were not interested in suddenly is not that bad and suddenly it's everywhere and now Eh, it's not, I like it. Maybe even you go as far as to think you like it. To start participating in a trend only to not care about it in a couple months because you didn't actually like it in the first place anyway. Same thing with the Sambas. The Adidas shoe Sambas obsession, I don't get it. I scroll Pinterest a lot for thrifted uh, outfit ideas, like to use things if it's already in your closet. And that's how basically a lot of the times how I find out what's trending. But for me, what I find a lot is when trends first come out, I don't like them. Like I look at them and I go, that's awful, that's ugly, that would not look good on me, no thank you. I feel like that's what happens with trends and that's what I am actively fighting against with the Sambas because now all my cool friends have either thrifted a pair or bought them. All the creators that I watch because I like like their food videos or maybe they do thrifted outfits, now they've got the Sambas and now they're wearing them. Madison bought them for athletic purposes. She had no idea they were trendy. She had no idea. <laughs> she bought them and I was like, what are you doing? And she yeah, explained to me that she bought them for, I guess, soccer maybe? Essentially though, Sambas exist in my house in my size. I'm not gonna wear them because I think they're ugly. And it doesn't matter how many cool girls I see wearing them, I still think they're ugly. <laughs> So a huge part of my personality is that I hate the heat, that I was born in Houston, Texas, lived here all my life, um, and I still actively like cannot stand the heat, I hate it. And one of my favorite ways to dress or like to make an outfit interesting is layering. I think that's a big part of why I'm a big fan of the fall season um, because you can layer things when it's cool outside and you can look cute. I like all of that about it. But in the summer, obviously I can't do that. And one of the ways that I've done it over the years is I will wear a lot more jewelry in the summer um, than I would any other part of the year. I do like the rings. But I feel like something that's trendy right now that I keep seeing um, is permanent jewelry. And I just have a feeling this is a trend that's not going to last because people get tired of things. And because this is like the way the permanent jewelry stuff is set up is you go into a place and you like point something out and that's the thing that you make permanent jewelry. It's real, it's just the same exact thing just without a clasp on it. And, and I guess it's like tarnish free jewelry, which is good. We love to see longer, higher quality, lasting jewelry. But the problem with this stuff is, is that the only way you can like get it off is if you take the time to open something up. But I feel that what's happening actually is is that permanent jewelry is trendy and what happens when permanent jewelry is no longer trendy and then you want to take it off right then you have to essentially break it or go somewhere to get it taken off and then you have to go somewhere to get it put back on and now all of a sudden it's an accessory that like you can't manage to put on and take off yourself and now all of a sudden it just sits in the back of a drawer i'm anti-hauling the permanent jewelry let me know if you agree or disagree but it's not for me okay i know that this cup on my channel and on my my social pages in general, has been quite the hot button topic. You need to leave. The Stanley Cup is the epitome of watching something that should be more sustainable uh, become a trend. I feel watching water bottles trend throughout the years has been frustrating to watch, but at the same time, like different water bottles in my home serve different purposes. This is the only Stanley Cup I have bought. Okay, I'm not collecting them the way that has been, again, this weird normalization of, of doing that online. I think that's actually the problem. I'm not gonna rant about this for very long, but I did buy this secondhand. Specifically, I didn't even know they were trending. It's because my mom was talking to me about how much better these cups are because they fit into your cup holder in your car. And I was getting water stains from my hydro flask always leaking on my car, okay? That's in my defense. That's what happened for me. And I'm not anti-hauling the Stanley. That's not the reason I'm telling you this whole story. Because the thing that I'm anti-hauling here are the overwhelming, ridiculous amount of Stanley accessories that have come along with this cup becoming the trend. That the goal 
is to be more conscious about consumerism. Do we need all these little knickknacks and things that A, are probably gonna break? These things are very often very cheaply made, not good quality, and they fall apart. Your charms are not gonna last you very long. And so if we're being conscious about consumerism, that's not something you would buy, not something I would buy. That's why I'm anti-hauling it. You're not gonna see me hauling it, putting it in a, in a video of things I want to buy. This is a video of things I don't wanna buy. And those are some of the things. Now, if you wanna make a cute little friendship bracelet, with your friends, like that's one thing, a little like charm for your stuff, especially bonus points, big bonus points. If it's something you already had that you're making into a charm for your Stanley or something that you got secondhand, cause we know I love my secondhand craft store. I don't know what I would do without them, if I'm being honest. But in the spirit of anti-hauling, just buying the next bottle because it's trendy, I also am gonna anti-haul the things that come along with it that are a form of consumerism that is not conscious and things that we just don't need. I would love to hear if there are things that you've seen on the internet that are also very irking to you that you are not going to be buying. And if you agree or disagree with me on any of these, let me know in the comments and we will make the anti-haul a regular thing again, but you have to help me with ideas. There are only so many things I see out there. So I need you to help me gather these. You can tag me on TikTok, you can tag me on Instagram, you can drop it in the comments, but if you wanna see this series, I am definitely gonna need your help sourcing some of the things that are ridiculous that we need to not normalize and we need to talk more about conscious consumerism. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Remember, we didn't have a sponsor, but KNS, my brand, is kind of the sponsor of this video. If you're looking to reduce your single use plastic when it comes to your cycle, and also remember until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys.